Hi, gorgeous. A dollar donation supports our safe station. If you're enjoying my work, check a Patreon perk. Hi, neighbor. What are you doing out here on Thanksgiving? Oh, what am I doing out here on Thanksgiving? I just needed a break. Just a little one. I'm going to head back in at some point. I have to, but... I just needed a little fresh air. Um, it's it's really good to see you. Yeah. Yeah, you just have one of those energies, I think. I, I think you have just the friendliest face. And to be perfectly honest, it's nice to see anyone other than my family at this point. But anyhow, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm surprised you didn't hear the fighting <laughs> from a couple houses down. Really, though? But there are worse things. I have a home. I have a family, but strictly between you and me, I wonder sometimes if that isn't the blessing that the Hallmark cards like to lead us to believe. Oh, I didn't mean to upset you. Are you okay? Here, come over here. Walk, walk over, <laughs> walk on over to my territory. I don't bite. Yet, <laughs> depending on, depending on how bad Thanksgiving gets at some point, I might start biting. But you will be, you will steer clear of all of that. You are okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know that we've ever really shared a space before. <laughs> You're cuter than I recall. Well, not that, not that you ever weren't. Just up close, it's you know, it's funny. We've been neighbors for so long. I just never thought to to really talk. I don't know whether maybe I thought you had no interest in making new friends or. Maybe I felt like we were just kind of, you know, working our own worlds and we have a lot on our individual plates. It's, it's funny how, you know, this happens to me a lot when I lose a bad friend and I realize I have this massive roster of awesome people, of friendly acquaintances that I've always wanted to get to know better and I just hadn't made the time and I realized well that's because all of my time and social energy was going to the toxic friendships and it was this massive disservice to nurturing relationships with cooler people but they were always there I just never either got around to getting to know them better or maybe I was shy because you know some people you think are so cool and and despite your level of self-esteem, you wonder, well, what are, are they really going to want to make new friends, let alone with me? They probably have so many friends. And more oftentimes than not, they are in exactly the same boat as you are. We all have so much in common, especially on Thanksgiving. And clearly, you're looking like you need a new friend. Yeah, yeah, I'll fill that void for you there. I'll <laughs> throw my name into the running. It's that bad, huh? Well, for starters, I mean, I had a really good conversation with my best friend before everybody came into town, you know, and she reminded me, A, Remember, you're not crazy. If you are, you are responding appropriately, she said this to me. She reminded me I am responding appropriately to the toxicity of my home. And let's not lose sight of that. Let's not lose sight of what is and is not positive, productive adult behavior, you know. And 
She also reminded me that it's important to set boundaries and make plans for myself. You know, I don't know about you, but my family kind of just, I kind of feel like an accessory sometimes, especially when it comes to the holidays and pictures and, you know, neighbor validation. Oftentimes the holidays are a time to just tote your family around and say, look how perfect, you know, like, like accessories, look at us. (laughs) And I find that oftentimes, you know, the call them, you know, patriarchs and matriarchs of my family, they will make plans for me. Let's say, okay, well, you, we are going to do this and that and this and that, and they will schedule my whole week for me. And she reminded me to make plans of my own. Say, actually, I'm visiting, I'm doing a Friendsgiving that evening, and I'm happy to help you cook before then. Or I actually have work to do while Everybody is going to be enjoying happy hour, but I can pop in for the important parts. I can be a part of the pictures and the meal and the serving, you know, whatever, whatever it is that's important to the family that you're a part of. She reminded me it's it's very important to set boundaries, understand my energies and respect the fact that I deserve to enjoy a happy Thanksgiving and to have a good time and to take care of myself in the same way that I'm taking care of other people. And it's very easy to lose sight of that especially when you're feeling peer pressured by everyone. But to remember, all right, here are the plans. Here's Here are the priorities. Here are all the plans of which everybody is going to be partaking in. And here is where I'm going to struggle. And so countering those struggles with plans of your own, boundaries of your own, or even scheduling breaks. Like, all right, this is generally where everybody just talks around the table. I can excuse myself and chill for a minute. Uh, and if people ask, I will, can lie and say I was on the toilet. Who cares? It's <laughs> I don't care what they think, you know, <laughs> Any, maybe it wouldn't come to that. But whatever excuses, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's okay if people aren't going to respect your energy. Sometimes it's okay <laughs> to, to create an excuse. I don't know if any of that was helpful, but... It's been helpful for me. I wish I had more I could share with you, but family is hard. You know, stay in therapy, journal, (laughs) talk to your friends. Sometimes if I feel really, you know, exceptionally gaslit by family members or guilted, I'll write down, you know, as if I was like scripting a textbook, um, as objective as I can, the situation. And sometimes that helps me to see and recognize where, you know, I generally was absolutely correct in feeling offended or hurt or neglected or used. Sometimes it's helpful to write down the incidents and review it later, sleep on it, wake up, read it the next morning. And I think the hardest thing for me about, maybe we'll just go ahead and say it, the toxic family dynamic is not managing their tantrums and fits and, you know, counterproductive tensions and irresponsibilities. Like, that's annoying, sure, and I shouldn't have to, you know, play the eldest (laughs) with the room of adults. But that's certainly annoying. But I think what's most hurtful is the way in which I'll oftentimes doubt my own sanity when I have a number of people telling me that I'm wrong for saying you know, such and such and such and such a rude statement was unnecessary when everyone was just passing potatoes and having a good time. Like maybe you didn't need to insult Aunt Marie when she passed the potatoes in the counterclockwise direction, you know, as if I am insane for expecting like sensible family interactions. And that's the case that is... It has so much less to do with principle and more to do with function. I'm like, if you all you all fight tooth and nail to try to be that white picket fence family you want so badly for that image, and yet you say and do so, you make so many choices that would counter, that that would oppose that potential conclusion. I guess people get, I guess maybe just the 
where resentment has been built, diffusing situations is not as immediately gratifying, I suppose, as chewing people out, unfortunately. And I think, too, a lot of our family members, you know, maybe maybe even family members of whom we wouldn't expect it from, we probably have lower self-esteem than we think especially the grown adults in our families because as children, you know, ever since we were kids, we were taught to respect our elders and respect our authorities and respect our adults in our lives, respect our parents, etc. But and now that I'm getting older, I'm seeing just so much insecurity, childlike insecurity in people that I had been conditioned to follow and believe in and assume maturity and responsibility of and I'm realizing you know that really isn't the case for a lot of my family members of whom since I was a kid I assumed were stable somehow and they're not and so that helps too just to remember what you're working with (laughs) to understand okay you know angry uncle uh, angry uncle what's a generic name mike <laughs> he's insecure he's immature he's not to be taken seriously which at first always made me feel really guilty to train myself to, to counter that conditioning and understand i actually don't need to respect people's authorities that doesn't mean i hurt them it doesn't mean i you know rip <laughs> uncle bob (laughs) a new one just because you know he's it doesn't mean that we go on the offensive or hurt anybody's feelings if you know not required in self-defense but it does mean (laughs) when certain people speak i don't need to respect their opinions or thoughts feelings i don't have to respect their feelings if they're coming from an irresponsible selfish place So helping him. So anything I can do to help myself roll a lot of the unnecessary, rude commentary off my back from people that I'm supposed to trust, people who are supposed to love me, anything I can do to try to like observe my experience with my family as opposed to feel immersed within that social life is helpful. And that is something my therapist <laughs> highly encourages that I, I try I always try to think of myself. She wants me to be an observer. When I spend time with my family, I'm it's more of like a study. I'm I'm an observer in their presence as opposed to a part of the crowd. But that's easier said than done when you're literally swept up in the energy. Or certain people give you a glimmer of hope and then, you know, hope dashed <laughs> shortly, but Well, look at that. It looks like I had a lot to get off my chest, too. Anyhow, misery loves company. I generally hate that saying, but, you know, I think from a more optimistic point of view, I think misery can love company because people thrive on relatability. We can band together and help each other if we can understand experience shared experiences and I do feel like we share a lot of our family Thanksgiving experience and that's been really nice it's nice not to feel so alone it's power in numbers we all know this so connecting with you has been cathartic thank you thanks for talking to me saying hi Yeah, and being my new friend. I like that too. Oh, shoot. We should probably get back. But again, I feel better already. I feel like I just took a nap. (laughs) I feel like I took a shower and I am down for round two of the day, you know. (laughs) It's been re-energizing sharing with you. Thank you. Good luck in there. And remember, observer... You are an observer (laughs) this time around. And nobody has to know that. Nobody has to know you are an observer. Do your best to protect your energy. You deserve it, okay? 
Okay. Hey, um, knock on my door after dinner a little later. You can join us or maybe, I assume we'll probably wrap around the same time. We'll be doing dishes or something like that. Um, maybe we can <laughs> blow off some steam together and recap in great detail <laughs> our Thanksgiving. Okay. Hey. And I mean it. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm really thankful that I connected with you today. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. Try. <laughs>